Hello, this is Bob McClellan. In this screencast, I will show you the technical details of how to create an Excel pivot table using OpenXML. Pivot tables can be very complex, but I will show you the minimum number of elements needed for a functioning pivot table. I will be showing code from the PowerTools core, which can be found on powertools.coplex.com. You can find this code in version 2.2.2 or later. This is the example for pivot tables. The first one I'm going to skip because it is just setting up the data on an existing spreadsheet. We'll look at this example though. It creates a brand new spreadsheet. This first part is just setting up a new worksheet with the data that is going to be used for the pivot table. So I'm going to skip down to where we set the range and then create a new worksheet and then create the pivot table there. So I'm going to touch briefly on this set range just for so you can see all the whole process. Set range is just a matter of putting all the pieces together and putting it in the right place. And the right place is within this defined names element of the workbook, not the worksheet. Uh, ranges are defined outside of all sheets, but they reference the sheet. So make sure the defined names exist. If it doesn't, we add it. Then add a new defined name to the list if there isn't one already with that name. And then set the value. And the value is a concatenation of all these, the sheet name, the starting, ending, column, row and column. And I'm using this get column ID, which just translates the column number into its sequence of letters. So that sets the range. Now for the really fun part, creating the pivot table. The parameters passed to this are, of course, the document itself, the range that is going to be the basis for the pivot table, and the new sheet, or the sheet that the pivot table is going to go into. The first step that I'm performing here is to find where the range data is, because I'm going to need to process through that data in a number of ways to, in order to set up a pivot table. So I've got this, uh, this function, it's in the same file called get range, and all it's doing is using that name to get the start and end rows and columns and the sheet that it references. So I'm then going to create a pivot field and a cache field for each column which is each field in the pivot table. The pivot fields are easy. They're all exactly the same. They just have to be there as sort of a placeholder. Um, but the cache fields need to have some special information in there if it's numeric. Otherwise, the pivot table won't recognize it as being numeric. And that's in this shared items. So I set up a empty shared items, which is fine for strings. But if it's numeric, then I'm going to have to scan through all the data to find out if it's integer or not, and if it what its minimum and maximum values are, so I can set those attributes. Uh, and that's what all this code does. And then it'll recognize when I create the cache field with that uh, shared item with these min, max, and other attributes, that that cache field will then be recognized as an integer, so that if you click on just the check mark, for example, in Excel, uh, when adding that field to the pivot table, it'll know, oh, I can put that in as a data value. Otherwise, you would have to just would have to drag it over there, and that's not expected behavior. So that sets up pivot tables or pivot fields and cache fields. The next step is to create these pivot cache records. And the pivot cache records will all will contain all of the data from the source. It's a cache of the entire source. And that will do a number of things for us. Most specifically, it will mean that 
you won't have to refresh the pivot table. You can just start editing how it's going to look, which what's going to be in the rows and columns. I mean, you won't need a refresh. And uh, these pivot cache records are there's a yes, there's an R element, and that element contains uh, either S or N elements for the values in each field of that row. And then there's the finishing up, connecting everything together. So once we, we've got all the, all the pieces ready to go, so the parts that need to be created are a pivot table part, a pivot table cache definition part, and a pivot table cache records part. And I'm creating the pivot table part on the sheet the pivot table cache definitions part on that pivot table and the pivot table cache records part on that cache but you also need to add the part um, that that cache definition part also has to be added to the workbook so it's it's referred to or linked in two spots then we start setting the content of these parts. The pivot cache records has already been entirely created. We can just store that. The cache definition has a number of attributes that need to be set up, including the ID for the records part has to be referenced here. There's a record count. And then the, co the source of the cache has to be shown where in this case it's a range, so it knows where the cache came from. That w allows the refresh to work properly. Then we need to create a pivot cache entry in the workbook. This is a fairly standard kind of uh, process of looking to see how there, if there are any elements, how many there are, so we can create a unique cache ID uh, they're just they can be just sequential they're really an arbitrary number but I find this the easiest way to use this max uh, in order to pull the max current maximum and and uh, and then add one to it here on the end and then creating a new element for the new cache and referencing the ID of the cache definition so that's the update to the workbook part. And finally, the pivot table part itself is a matter of creating the pivot table definition at element with its appropriate attributes. Uh, we give it a name, an arbitrary name, refer to the cache ID that we just created in, in the last piece of code. It's going to have a data caption which I just use values, that's I think the default for a pivot table when it's created in Excel. And then the location here is going to be a, a standard size block for an empty pivot table. It has no rows, columns, data elements, or, or page filters in it. And then there's a few other attributes that are needed in order for it to function properly in Excel. And then the pivot fields which uh, were created before. And that's it. So let's take a look at the results. I run this code and created this new pivot. And I'm using the tool that allows me to look at the document format in Visual Studio. A very handy tool, which you should all be using. So let's kind of run it through from the top. I have my workbook. It has a link to the pivot cache definition. I'm going to reformat this so it's easy to see. And there's my range definition and the pivot cache element that needed to be in there. So I have pivot cache definition. And here 
You can see all the cache fields I created. The shared items contain numeric information when needed. And there's also that link to the pivot cache records. which you can see is also referenced by an ID here. Pivot cache records, all the data, and so it can, it's, a, it's a complete copy of all the data that is was in the spreadsheet itself. And you can see the has N for numerics and S for string values. And then there's the pivot table itself. You can see all the pivot tables are just are practically just placeholders. There's not really nothing in them. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff that can be in there, but I'm just avoiding that in this simple example. And there's our cache ID reference and and everything that was set up for that. And so now we can look at the result. There's the data that was in the cache. Here's our pivot table. It's empty, but it, ha it knows what all those fields are. It knows the amount as a value. And everything works the way it should. So there you go. The minimum needed to create a pivot table using OpenXML.